Hi, my name is Pierre Daoud, and uh, my advisor is Dr. Karen Torres. And uh, my research is about paper-based ion selective electrode for the detection of fluoxetine in aqueous solution. Um, I'm going to go over some background about why my research is important, um, then uh, some information about potentiometry and how it works, then uh, some past publications about the, the uh, electrodes to detect fluoxetine, uh, then uh, my experiment, then my results, and some future work that can be done after this. Uh, fluoxetine is an antidepressant drug. Uh, it is used for the treatment of major depression, panic disorder, bulimia, uh, dysphoric disorder, and is considered to be uh, one of the top 100 drugs prescribed in the U.S. in 2018, uh, with nearly 22 million prescriptions filled, um, and its pure compound exists as fluoxetine chloride. Uh, unfortunately, there are several ways that pharmaceuticals like fluoxetine end up in our uh, environment. For example, treated wastewater uh, coming from industrial and municipal system, and excreted drugs in, in its immobilized active form. And the thing is, uh, wastewater treatment plants are not designed to filter uh, pharmaceuticals like that, and they end up in different bodies of water affecting the marine life and ultimately affecting humans. And they have uh, a lot of uh, bad effects on the environment in such small concentrations. Uh, for example, um, it's toxic to algae in the micromolar range, and it's uh, causes developmental abnormalities in fish uh, in the nano range. Uh, also, it significant, has significant effect on uh, breeding behavior in some uh, native fish in North uh, America. And it reduces the growth of some types of green algae at normal nanomolar concentration as well. Uh, therefore, uh, we need to be able to detect fluoxetine at such low concentrations. Um, so various analytical techniques have been used to detect uh, fluoxetine, including spectrophotometry, high-performance liquid chromatography, uh, gas chromatography, uh, thin layer chromatography, uh, uh, liquid chromatography, and others. Uh, but the things uh, with these methods is that they're expensive, they require complex instruments, uh, also they require a lot of sample preparation, and they also uh, don't have easy mobility, so you can't actually take them to like a site and test the water there. Um, electrochemical uh, detection techniques offer several advantages in comparison to all these uh, methods. Uh, for example, they're simple, rapid, uh, portable. They have a lower cost and lower power requirement. Um, and also, they um, don't need any pretreatment. And the inactive substance and uh, the drugs uh, don't uh, affect their uh, detection because uh, they don't cause any interference. Uh, potentiometry is a type of uh, electrochemical technique that measures a potential difference in response to a chemical event that is registered by an electrode. Um, based on a physical state of the substrate that form the electrode, uh, ion selective electrode, or also known as ISEs, can be classified as either solid contact or liquid contact electrode. Uh, for example, for liquid contact, uh, it's usually a tube and it's filled with the analyte of interest. Um, and uh, the electron transport mechanism is present at the membrane analyte solution interface. Uh, for the solid contact electrode, uh, ion selective membrane are deposited directly onto solid electrode surfaces um, with no internal electrolyte solution at all. Uh, and these electrodes are usually made out of glass. Uh, the ICs determine the concentration of ions by measurements of uh, electrical potential, uh, which is related to the surface of the membrane. Um, this ISEs is determined by the phase boundary potential uh, represented by this equation over here, um, where uh, this is the activity, uh, activities of the primary ion uh, of charge Z in aqueous and organic phase, uh, respectively, and in not an R 
and T and, uh, and F are standard potential gas constant, absolute temperature, and Faraday constant, respectively. Uh, but the thing is, when activity of the primary ions in the organic phase membrane is kept constant and dependent on the change in aqueous uh, solution equation, uh, this equation get reduced to the Nernst-Chen equation. Um, therefore, uh, a tenfold increase in activity of a monovalent ion will increase the potential of the cell by 59.2 millivolts. Uh, therefore, when we um, when an electrode uh, ex experiences any type of change, uh, like a, a change of uh, tenfold increase in a molarity of the analyte of interest, uh, the response that we should see is a 60 millivolt uh, increase, uh, and that's called inertia uh, response. Uh, the most important part of the uh, electrode is the sensing membrane. Uh, the potentiometric sensor is made of a membrane with a unique composition, and uh, a composition is chosen in order to impart the potential that's primarily associated with the ion of interest uh, with a selective binding process at the membrane solution interface. Uh, the membrane of an electrode uh, response is component of an organic cation that's in excess in the sample solution. So the membrane is made actually of three things. Uh, it's made of an ion exchanger, which uh, uh, provide electron neutrality and ensure permisselectivity. Uh, it's made of a polymer matrix, which provide the support and mechanical uh, functionality uh, to the membrane. Uh, and that polymer matrix is made of two things, uh, usually a PVC, a polyvinyl chloride, and a plasticizer. Um, a plasticizer acts as a membrane solver. So it uh, make, allows a homogeneous dissolution and a, a diffusional mobility of the ion pair inside the membrane. So it helps with the ion exchange. Uh, so how does the ion exchange happen exactly? Uh, so when, so we have the membrane and the ion pair is made of FX uh, fluoxetine and uh, tetraphenyl borate and the FX is our um, positive ion here, and uh, tetraphenyl borate is our negative anion here. And then um, we make the electrode, we put it in water, and we add different concentrations, increasing by tenfold of uh, fluoxetine chloride. Um, so X negative is a chloride negative, and fluoxetine is N plus. Uh, so the, resp uh, the response for M plus or the fluoxetine in the solution uh, is due to the partitioning of hydrophobic membrane component ions uh, by extraction and equilibrium. So a potential difference is uh, made from the ion exchange between uh, the sample solution and the ion membrane uh, where the ions are getting exchanged and uh, that leads to the response of getting uh, the uh, nursion response. Uh, and if the membrane is good, uh, you're supposed to get that 60 millivolts increase um, based on that happening, for, be, uh, caused by the ion exchange. Uh, so therefore, the goal is to develop a flexible, robust, portable, a low cost paper based sensor for continuous detection of FX that can be taken to uh, like different uh, places and to test the water at site. Um, so, why paper? So, paper is a lightweight, uh, it's cheap, it's flexible, and also it doesn't need any electrical or mechanical forces. Um, and the delivery happens through a capillary action in the pores of the that's in the structure of the paper. Um, so what we do is we use carbon nanotubes um, and we use it to paint the paper due to their, uh, it has unique electrical properties and it's hydrophobic and it's insensitive to light and oxygen. Um, so the capillary forces 
promote very high sur surface contact with the carbon nanotubes and make the filter paper conductive. But uh, even uh, after painting the paper with uh, carbon nanotubes, there's still a problem of uh, sometimes the formation of an unwanted uh, water layer. And that uh, water layer causes an increase in the lower detection limit uh, caused by the trap like ion getting trapped between the uh, membrane and the paper. Um, and that causes the increase in the higher detection limit. So in order to improve that, uh, we need to use a transducer and a, a polymer. Uh, so we, and in uh, using single wall carbon nanotubes, we incorporate a poly three octal thiophene, which is this one, uh, also known as POT, it's a highly lipophilic and a conductive paper. And as an ion to electron transducer, it avoids, helps avoid the uh, uh, formation of water layer at the interface of the uh, conductive uh, support and ion selective membrane. Um, then after that, after we paint the paper with the ink made of these two, uh, we leave it to dry for a day. Um, then uh, we wrap it with a special kind of tape, uh, which helps uh, prevent the water from entering inside. The um, then we apply the membrane by drop casting it. Then this is the final uh, uh, out, like a final look of the, how the electrode looks. Um, so some previous. Uh, uh, publications of how they detected uh, fluoxetine using um, uh, film geometry, uh, they used PVC membrane, uh, where they play, they pretty much, the, the membrane is made with the same things uh, my membrane is made of. Out of, the only difference is, is this is a, um, a water, a, like a liquid contact electrode. Um, so the way they do it is they make the membrane and uh, they get a, a plastic tube and it's dipped into the mixture. Um, then a transparent membrane uh, is formed on the tube and then it's pulled out from the mixture and kept for room temperature. And afterwards, the, temp the tube is filled with an internal uh, filling solution of 10 to negative three molar of fluoxetine chloride and then the electrode uh, is conditioned for 24 hours by soaking it in the same solution. Um, while my membrane, uh, we make the electrode drop cast the membrane and it, it is conditioned in the same type of solution. Uh, the other type of membrane that they made is a nanocomposite carbon paste electrode, which this one is a completely different one. Uh, it's pretty much uh, uh, also plastic tube that's dipped in the membrane, but instead of, uh, there is a copper wire that's inserted into the opposite end of the carbon paste electrode, uh, which help establish electrical uh, con contact. And um, th they use like a different uh, composition entirely. And uh, that's the electrode. Um, for this one, uh, the liquid membrane here is exactly like the PVC membrane, like the way they do it. It's just a different uh, composition of uh, like plasticizer to PVC to ion pair to NATPB uh, composition. Um, so how we make our membrane is we mix 0 0.1 molar of the uh, fluoxetine chloride with 0 0.1 molar of the uh, Na uh, sodium tetraphenyl borate, and then we uh, precipitate it and we filter it, um, then leave it to dry. Then we take a little bit of the resulting ion pair, which makes FX TPB, and um, then we make our membrane cocktail uh, by taking around 10 milligram of that. Then we uh, use a plasticizer to PPC ratio of 2 to 1 because that's experimentally proven to be the most effective. Uh, a way to get a good results, good slope. 
and we used two types of uh, plasticizers we, in the two sets of experiment. The first one was um, uh, bisethyl hexyl sebicate, also known as DOS, and we used uh, two nitrophenyl octal ether, also known as OMPOI. And um, after doing that, we dissolved the relative cocktail and tetrahydrofuron, also no, furon, or also known as CHF, uh, which helps uh, access glue and helps uh, the membrane uh, stick to the electrode and not leach. Um, so we uh, drop cast it and we leave it to uh, dry for 24 hours, then we condition it, then we run our tests. So first we uh, ran, uh, we want to see the effects of conditioning. So we ran uh, a set of electrodes uh, that are not conditioned uh, with these parameters and a set of electrodes that are conditioned. And we see that there's not a lot of difference, only a small, uh, pretty much a small difference of conditioning. And we observed this leaching here. Um, so we also wanted to see the effect of the amount of ion pair um, so we tested electrodes made with five milligrams of ion pair in comparison to 10 milligrams of ion pair. We see that the 10, mig 10 milligrams is a little bit significant, a little bit non-significantly higher, but just a little bit higher. So we, from the this point forward, we stuck with 10 milligrams of ion pair. Um, then uh, we know that the, um, the uh, plasticizer has a big effect on the slope. Um, so we changed uh, the so uh, the plasticizer from those to Ampoi, and we see that it has a slight a, a better impact on the slope. It's only by eight or nine uh, millivolts, but it still brought it higher. Uh, but still, we are observing this um, leaching, and uh, it's the there is it's negative, and instead of plateauing, it's just going down. Uh, so we determined that the reason that this is happening, the saturation, is because there is not enough uh, negative ions in the membrane to help the co-extraction happen. Um, so the whole ion exchange is not happening uh, efficiently, therefore that's causing the subnertion slope. So we had to add uh, sodium tetraphenyl borate to the membrane directly, um, and we started with a one-to-one -one ratio of the ion pair. The ion pair. And we finally uh, observed a inertia slope. Uh, we got a 60, and uh, even though the limit of detection is a little low, 3 to uh, 10 to negative 3, 10 to negative 5, but we observed a uh, inertia slope, which is a good start. Um, and we wanted to compare the amount of conditioning effect. So we did it one hour in comparison to 24 hours. And we saw that one hour is better because uh, probably when it spends a lot of time in conditioning, the membrane might start leaching or something. So one hour is the best amount. Then we wanted to see the effect of half to decrease the amount of NATPB added um, uh, instead of one to one, it's would be 0 0.5 to one. Uh, and we see that it just brought the slope a little bit down, uh, but it's still in a little submersion, but it's still in, in a good uh, results, like better than here. It's still like in the 50s. Um, so we can see that the inertia response is observed. Uh, Paper-based ICEs can be used for more complex ions. It has been only used for uh, simple ions like sodium, potassium, uh, calcium, uh, therefore we can see that it can be used for bigger ions. Uh, plasticizer have an impact on the slope, even if it's not that big, and that's due that Ompoi has a better dielectric constant than uh, dose. Um, so in the future, we can also try other plasticizers. An addition of NATPB to the membrane uh, was imp like uh, imperative to the helping improve co-extraction, which led to a better slope. So future uh, work is we got to focus on improving the limit of detection, bring it up to the uh, micro and nan nano range uh, by uh, changing a plasticizer to MMA-DMA, uh, which um, uh, it 
has a lower coefficient of diffusion compared to DOS or ampoy, um, so will prevent leaching of the membrane into the sample solution uh, at very low concentration, and that hopefully uh, would uh, help uh, the limit of dissection. Also, we can help increase uh, the NATPB to ion pair ratio to the one to see how would that affect our slope. And also, we can try uh, the paper-based ISE uh, with and test its selectivity with other drugs to see if it's compatible. Um, lastly, I would like to thank Dr. Torres for giving me this opportunity and allowing me to conduct research in her lab. Um, thank you, Muhammad, for always uh, for mentoring me and always answering my questions and uh, Cody and Brian for uh, always uh, volunteering information and being there. Uh, here are my references and um, thank you.